All right, good morning. We're going to recap day nine. Um, this is already week three, um, kind of the closing out of a week three at Oakland Park. Um, Frost making an appearance for for week three. Um, all right, um, I recorded a video earlier, but kind of had some uh, technical difficulties, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, kind of pick up where I left off on that video and sort of where picking up where we left off for this week, starting with some trends and some hot trainers, hot barns. Um, Diodoro started off the week really strong. Um, Thursday had three winners, almost four with the uh, photo finish in that um, on Thursday. And then going into Friday, he sent out three horses, all three winners. Um, so we're kind of following those races heading into yesterday. Yesterday he had four horses run, um, three of those horses, off the board at sh kind of shorter prices, a little bit shorter than their morning line. And then um, one big upset winner at 27 to one in race seven. And so when we're getting into this third week and um, we're starting to see some of these horses run back. And so that horse in race seven, we'll kind of start there. Um, I'll take a, take a break from uh, petting frost and we'll go to we'll go to race seven and then kind of work backwards with some other with some other trends but straight to indy he pulled the upset in that race making his second start second start of the meet and had some had some upside coming off of his trip on um in that first race let's get this horse pulled up here um the number 12 horse street to indy so he raced on january 26th similar condition um however muddy track and again, if you want to go back and um, check out the video, because we kind of went in a little bit more detail about this race and this trip, but had trouble at the start and then um, took up heading into the first turn, chased him off the pace um, wide and without much ask. So the, the type of trip, the type of ride that you would expect to see uh, to see some upside out of. Um, there was some concern as far as being in the right condition. I mean, he'd been racing against uh much lower company. I mean, if you're just looking at, at purse size, I mean, running for $25,000 out in California to this $86,000 purse here at Oakland Park. So some class concerns on that front, but um, was able to overcome it yesterday, got far more aggressive ride from Mojica, pushed out of the gate, um, outside horses close up to the pace, um, staying on late. And again, pulling the upset. One of the other themes we've talked about this meet um, is the presence of Joe Talamo on horses and kind of setting up some opportunities for those long shots. And that was the case here as he was on the favorite communicator. Um, and again, this horse finishing off the board, 10th beat 19th on the, uh, on the chart. But again, the trip playing a big factor and more than the trip, the ride, the tactics. Um, Talamo being... Uh, Poor timing, moving this horse up early between horses um, before losing ground. So not an ideal trip, a little bit stress on that front. Um, and again, uh, assisting the race to um, set up for a price. So again, kind of talking about talking about barns hot and cold. One of the barns um, that I mentioned on this video being a little bit cold this meet was the Hollendorfer barn and things kind of seem to be turning around there. So we'll pick up um, on the third race. I don't think there was that much to discuss in the first couple, but the third race, um, this is another horse making his second start of the meet. Awesome anywhere. So he, um, he ran in the optional claiming race on opening day and um, was one of the favorites that afternoon and um, was wide and wide against the bias. So the inside lanes on that opening day were the place to be. And again, going back to the video, if you go back and watch, you kind of talked about this horse having some upside off that. Um, and then even though he didn't get the win, he finished second yesterday, a big race, his best of speed, just got tagged late by touching rainbows, um, another Southern California based horse shipping out here to Oakland Park for uh, Phil D'Amato, kind of got that perfect pocket trip, um, kind of laying in wait and uh, took over, angled out, took over late um, for the win, but still big effort for awesome anywhere. And again, we're looking at barns kind of going from cold to hot or hot to cold. You want to start to see that shift. And, um, and that's what we're seeing there. So we'll move on again. I don't think a, a lot to cover in race four and race five. Again, if you guys see anything there, saw any trips that um, 
that you wanted to discuss? I just want to kind of make sure as I'm going through, because I know there's there's a lot to discuss in race six. Um, on race race four and race five, um, go ahead and send send a note. Um, otherwise, we'll kind of pick up with uh, with race six here. And again, um, Hollendorfer. So he sent out the, the he sent out two horses in this race, but the more fancied of those horses was number one, Calf Moon Bay. And Calf Moon Bay, um, by all accounts, probably should have been scratched. She was extremely fractious in the gate. I mean, there's horses that are like restless in the gate, but she was completely thrashing around in the stall. Um, even to the point they got her settled and like, okay, they're they're going to run this race and not even check her out. And they, they backed her up out of the gate briefly and put her back in. But just one of those things where you just know, um, it, even if she's not scratched, she's not going to run a race. And that was the case here. I would completely excuse this effort. Um, all things considered, I mean, she just was closer to the pace and lost ground, but probably should have been scratched. So that's worth keeping in mind. The winner of the race, La Renoletta. So she's making her first start for Steve Asmussen, had some form um, from South America and a, a big effort for her. Um, you know, that she had, you know, obviously maybe a little bit softer feel, the trouble, uh, the trouble with the, uh, the second choice in there maybe making it a little bit easier for her, but overall um, a strong ride, a strong effort. There was some drifting out. Um, it's hard to see on the pan shot, but if you want to go back and look at the head on, you can see her drifting out. So that might be something to keep in mind, but otherwise earned a solid figure, 95 optics figure for that race. Um, a good effort. We'll probably see her stepping up in class. Um, Race seven, um, again, we touched on that. We'll go into race eight. So the King Cotton Stakes, this is the one uh, stakes race on the card. I wrote about this race um, for Brisnet. So that was kind of the, the free race there. Um, and, did, and did a horse by horse. And part of the reason is I, I picked this race as one. Um, on Saturday, people are interested in these stake races. But, um, you know, also I, I, I thought that um, – that Whitmore might be a little bit, a little bit vulnerable in that race, just sort of based on his running style and based on the fact that um, he's going to be a short price in this race. And, and that was kind of the um, sort of the idea of going into this race was um, playing, playing against him. And he ran a good race. He finished second in this race. But the one thing to point out, um, and like Catherine Bay, he was fractious, not in the gate, but behind the gate very reluctant to load, kicking out, um, just not, not the most eager. And this is a horse. He's, he's now seven years old. Um, this isn't his first rodeo. He's raced many times, many tracks on the biggest stage. So to see this type of behavior at this point in his career is not the most positive. Um, even though again, he did run a good race to finish second, earned a one oh one optics figure. Um, I should, I should note, uh, we kind of take a, a 24 hour to kind of finalize these figures. So pre 101 figure, and then this will get um, it's pending verification right now, but either way um, a strong race from him, but the gate antics, uh, it just, you have to keep that in mind with older horses. Um, anytime you see that type of change, there was also um, in addition to his running style, again, we've talked about in this video, talked about in that race analysis, short price favorite coming from off the pace, need a lot to go their way. They need pace. They need racing luck, um, not to find trouble or traffic um, and, and also placement coming into this race. So, for, for Whitmore, he's been running in the hot spring stakes over the last few seasons. He's won the race three years in a row. Um, the last two years, he's entered this rate. He entered the hot spring stakes, um, coming back off 126 day layoff and, and sort of showing up here in this spot. Um, I, there might be some intention. I know it's a little bit reading between the lines without sort of knowing what the trainer's thinking, but wanting to see if he's still the same horse to compete in that race. And, and that might've been the reason he was running in this stakes versus waiting, um, to run kind of fresh, like the typical pattern they've done in the last couple of years. So we'll kind of see where, where he shows up. Um, and then, you know, if he does show up later in this meet, we're going to have to assess all those factors again, um, the gate antics, trip, run style, whether he fits in the race. Um, share the upside, the winner of the race was able to take advantage of the pace scenario from the inside and assertive ride, um, controlled the front end and was able to hold up Whitmore late. Um, 
Diodoro finishing third, Silver Ride. He was making his second start in the meet, had a perfect trip back on opening day in the mud. Um, that was race seven. Um, kind of paired his figures here, coming back on two weeks rest, but again, kind of had a little bit of a hot barn, um, finishing third at, at four to one here. Um, kind of continuing with Hollendorfer, we'll go to the last race on the car, the ninth race, uh, maiden special weight race. He won with the number one Sunnydale. Um, you know, I'm, overall, I'm just not, I'm not a fan of her. I've been following her in Southern California. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe she just liked Oakland Park. Um, pretty improved rep race yesterday um now as a four-year-old a uh, good trip good ride kind of that stock and pouse trip uh moving away late a couple horses in this field that uh, uh from the wagering aspect um seemed to to do some run and didn't do any run so that might have helped her but again we talk about hollander if he's starting to heat up um that's something to keep in mind he won with sunnydale and also had the second place finisher exchange west she ran a good race was wide made a move um, and a good, uh, good willing second behind her stable mate. The effort from the third place finisher, Island Sky, sneaky good effort from her, um, broke slow and then kind of had some trouble, took up at the start, raced wide, ran on late. I like that effort from her. Um, a couple of horses I said that weren't necessarily, didn't quite fire, that took money. Uh, and the number six prairie dress, the first time started for Steve Asmussen. She was part of the early pace and just kind of did not stick around, lost ground on the turn. And similar trip for Blip says, says Blip says bye. Um, coming off the layoff, outside horses close up to the pace, um, no keep around the turn. Uh, one, a couple horses worth mentioning, maybe have some upside. The number four, Miss Marsha Lynn, was not impressed with the ride, far too passive. In fact, I haven't been impressed with this rider at all this meet. Um, just not strong, not putting horses where they belong, um, not that great of a finisher. So I wouldn't be that surprised to see a rider change and with a rider change being a little bit more of an assertive ride. She finished up well, so I think there's some upside there. Number three, Addy. Steve, Ad uh, Steve Asmussen also sent out her. Now, she was entered um, a few days ago at Oakland Park on February 2nd in a maiden claiming event. So um, I would maybe look for her to show up at that level. She wasn't ridden to win here. And obviously having the other horse in the race that was a little bit more meant um, could be a prep for her. So might see some upside, especially with that class drop. So I think that's it for today. Um, as far as recapping yesterday's races, um, we've got a race of the day up at Brisnet already. That will be, um, the link for that's in the description here. And then, of course, follow over at OpticsEQ.com. We've got a couple races up for today um, over at Santa Anita. Um, and again, I want to wish everybody at the NHC good luck. This is the, the last day. So it's uh, now we're never time for the championship or even if you're in the um, consolation tournament. Um, you know, good luck to everybody. Thank you guys for watching. And um, we'll be back tomorrow to um, recap the uh, end of the third week.